One thing villains have in common, catchphrases and memorable lines. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. Beyonce. You, know who you, you know who you really That's look like? Did. You look like Luther Van Drop. <laughs> Tiffany, you're probably the most memed person of this cast. <laughs> yes. how do you, Queen of the meme. How do you feel about all those quotes coming back to, I guess, haunt you in some ways and live on. On TikTok, we see all the clips over and over again. Well, it takes my breath away as a 41-year-old gorgeous woman. And I love the fact that a 19-year-old can recognize me because of the memes. The memes have been a godsend for me because it keeps me relevant, it keeps me active. And I love the fact that someone can have a conversation with their parent or significant other just by sending me. They send my black ass. They don't even talk anymore. They <laughs> They don't text. They just send a picture of me doing something extreme from back in the day. I love them. And uh, yes, I am the queen of memes. And I want to keep that going. Nice. Oh, do you want your shoes back? Could you bless us with a dramatic reading of my personal favorite, the celebrity big brother, old maiden type shoes? When you think I need the card. <laughs> I, I, I had it. OK. Woo! Just in case. But the woman is prepared. Pretty much, I would let Gemma Collins know that she is a fat and those shoes that she gave me were not something that I would particularly buy for myself. They were definitely some old maiden type of shoes. And she had nerve to make mention that those shoes should be worn on a beautiful woman. So if that's the case, she should have put them back on the rack because she didn't qualify to wear those shoes. <laughs> if that was the case, I think Gemma is just a disgrace. Someone lied to her several times and told her that she has the vernacular that she thinks she possesses, but she doesn't. She's nothing like that. Gemma, you are nothing of the sort. Ladies and gentlemen, Woo! Tiffany New York Collins! I had to cut it short a little bit, y'all. I mean, I probably missed the word. I, I want that autographed. <laughs> I want it autographed before I leave this room. You going down before I do, you amphibian reptile mother House of Villains. That yes. word could be triggering for some, maybe owned by others. Where do you live with how you feel about that word? Do you self-identify as a villain? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm leaning into it. I love it. I think villains are hot. We go after what we want. We get what we want. And we're confident about it. It's as sexy and as sleek as Corinne described it. I mean. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I say I needed that mint, y'all, <laughs> I needed that mint. But it's just a term. You can play with it, do what you will with it. You can rub a dub dub it, make it more moist, or you can be hard and stand in it solidly. But like Corinne said, she embraced it, and we all have to because these are the biggest villains in America, if not the world. You've been there, done that. Is there any moment that you look back on that you feel like was your defining moment or a moment you wish you could take back or a moment that still irks you about your time on reality TV? <laughs> when I got spat on, mm. I'm still asked about the spit heard around the world 15 years, 18 years later. Um, yeah, pumpkin, I better not catch you in the supermarket <laughs> buying up all the blueberry ice cream or blue bunny ice cream, you know, because uh, I did see a picture of you recently, but I'll leave that alone. I'll digress. <laughs> oh, but um, yeah, fired. I would say that's the moment for me. It's oh. still defining to yeah. this day. On behalf of everyone who watched Celeb Reality back in the day, thank you for that moment. Slap me, bitch. What? Usually it's one villain in a cast of a bunch of non-villains. This is 10 villains in a house together, see what happens. When you saw everybody you were going to be living with, playing with, were you scared of anybody? Did anybody surprise you, good or bad? Who did you get a read on right away that you were like, oh. For me, it was let the games begin, okay? <laughs> because these are the largest villains that you're gonna get across the country. And to see them in there flailing their belts around like Fair Play just did, you know, he was the one that really stood out because he'll let you know real quick, oh, I invented this, I started this So just to see those eagles fly up, you love it because it's like you're in great company. So if you have to say some you're with someone that's gonna be able to take it and dish it back. So these are like, it's, Family. it's like a dream. <laughs> yeah. So I guess on that note, did anybody disappoint you that didn't stand, step up to the plate? I wanted a little bit more from Miss Anthesa. Yeah. 
I mean, okay. I feel like she had the body and the hair to command more, but she kind of like sat back but I don't want to give too much away because at the same time, I was surprised by her performance as the days went on. Silent assassin. <laughs> All right, get out of my face, you sucking, guzzling Republican. This show is going to be really good. <laughs> You've done every show under the sun. What do you <coughs> hope people take away from this one? I hope that people can see how much we have in common as villains. Like one of the things that I really loved just walking about the mansion, seeing personal objects from the other villains, be it a picture of a loved one, or hearing about dogs or things like that. Like it's like Johnny Fairplay was saying, we're not so bad, there's a heart there. So you know, the villain, we could all bring that and dish it when it needs to be, but at the same time, if you needed a hug, you can go and get a hug from this one or that one or, you know, somebody will pop some toast in if you forgot to do that before you hit the shower. So we kind of, girl, <laughs> I would not have survived without our morning cups of gel. So like those things like that.